that too far down the road. Uh, 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 Mr. Clerk, do we have a forum present? Please do. All right, wonderful. Um, tonight we have Ms. Uh, Abigail Strickland from uh, Main Street Noonan, who is going to talk with us about the Georgia Downtown Association. Oh, um, where, where, where are you on her? Yeah, just kind of sort of towards <laughs> us. Um, you should have a copy, I think, of the presentation in your packet. It's in the packet. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yes. So, um, yes, Mayor Cole asked me to come and speak about the Georgia Downtown Association. I know that y'all were members uh, last year, mm -hmm. um, and this is just something that y'all would like to continue, and I just wanted to kind of go over all of the assets of being a member of the Georgia Downtown Association. Association and how personally um, Main Street Newman uses um, the Georgetown Town Association. Association. <laughs> Goodness. Um, as Mayor Cole said, I'm Abigail Strickland. I'm the Main Street Manager for the City of Newman, but I also serve on the board of the Georgia Downtown Association. So if you just want to look, if you flip through your first, you've got a little welcome here from our current president, um, Jeffrey Fowler from Warrington, Georgia. Um, just basically talks about what we have going on for the next year. And then um, what Georgia Town Town Association is, it's a nonprofit statewide organization that connects communities and professionals uh, that are committed to a downtown vitality. So with this being said, any downtown in the state of Georgia can be a part of this. There's no size requirements or anything of that nature. It's open to all communities of all sizes. Then if you want to look, um, some of the things that the Georgia Downtown Association offers, of course, is networking. We have spring and fall regional meetups with people from all over the state. We have some spring ones actually coming up here in April. Um, they, like I mentioned, they all over the state. We have some of the Fox Theater this year, um, Hinesville, um, Calhoun, just all over the state. So it makes it easily accessible to everyone in the, their community. We also send out um, newsletters and then also set up random other networking events um, during the year. One thing that's unique to us, um, to the association, that we can do that a lot of the other state agencies can't do is we can um, advocate for the Georgia downtowns. Um, and we go and advocate on all communities to our legislators about upcoming, any kind of legislation that might be coming through um, that would affect the small businesses and Georgia downtowns. Whether that be historic tax credits or something of the nature, we currently have one going through on swipe fees for small businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that legislation is to, and correct me if I'm wrong, is to cap the amount that swipe companies can charge small businesses okay. for credit card transactions. Yes. Okay. Currently, right now, you can um, businesses are charged three percent for their fees for any transaction, and then also three percent on taxes. Okay. So it's an additional three percent fee. So right now, there's legislation that could allow for the state to. It, um, not process that 3% on the taxes as well. Okay. Which is great. Um, one of the things that we do offer, of course, we have annual achievement awards. Um, so any cities, downtown organizations, downtown development professionals, or even volunteers um, can receive these awards um, at our annual conference, which this year will be held in Canton, Georgia in August. We have generally about 200 plus attendees from all over the state attend this conference. I'd highly recommend if anybody has any time to come and see us in Canton this year. And if you need assistance in getting to Canton, we have a Downtown Edge Scholarship. Um, it's actually named out of uh, one of our former Main Street managers in the city of Swanee, Adam Edge. He had cancer pass away, so um, unfortunately, he was a huge proponent of the Georgia Downtown Association and downtown development. So we have a scholarship um, that also offers in-state scholarship and then national scholarship. So we also um, offer any trainings that could be Mobilize Main Street, um, our state conference, it could be our national Main Street conference, any of those things. One of the other things that the Georgia Downtown Association offers is a mentor program. Um, we pair up communities with new communities that are interested in downtown development with more that are better into being downtown developers. Um, so that's something that's um, a good program that we offer. And then also, Currently, right now, we're under the process of updating our Certified Downtown Professional Program. Um, so it's an educational, it's going to be probably taking 96 months, <laughs> um, not 96 months, 96 hours of um, classes to take. 
to become a certified downtown professional. Um, it's currently under the works, and so hopefully we'll reveal it this year in August at our conference. But okay. y'all have any questions or anything? You can that presentation beforehand. <laughs> a few. <laughs> just, just a time or two. So the reason that I wanted to bring Abigail up to us is just, number one, that so that, that you guys could meet Noonan's Main Street Manager. Yeah. And then also introduce uh, you to her, but also to see how, basically just to pick their brains. You know, how can we leverage their knowledge and their experience to encourage uh, revitalization or help the town when we begin to discuss other things such as the downtown development authority mm -hmm. or any kind of main street program yeah. um, I know that we may be a step or two ahead by going ahead and bring them in now mm -hmm. however I have always said you gotta you gotta do things before you're actually ready to do them and this is this is one of those things I know that that it may be a step or two ahead but We've got to have the experts at the table. Yeah. Abigail has how many years of experience with Five. Main Street Noonan? Five years. Five years with, with Noonan. Um, and being part of the, the Georgia Downtown Association, she's just able to bring in all the resources from GMA and the other downtowns, and, and hopefully uh, we can get them connected with the Bridges family and get them engaged. And it just provides us another option. It provides us some templates that we can maybe look at and, and try to put in place. Have you dealt with the basket case yet? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Newton's been in a great shape. <laughs> Brad can any, speak to that. Any small towns. But Brad has led us through <laughs> some <laughs> basket case <laughs> situations. I mean, the, the small small towns that have got nothing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I, that's another great resource right now. I'm a mentor for Thomaston. Mm -hmm. um, Thomaston is currently right now going through a great revitalization, but it was um, in the time where there was nothing there. Um, so I work with communities like that, like the mentor program is a huge asset. Um, so I would highly recommend, yeah. There's absolutely, there's so many things, especially like um, rural designation. Uh, there's funds out there mm -hmm. to do these things um, if you have the right um, assets. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have that mm -hmm. Has Newton done a facade program? We before? do. You do. We currently yes. offer a facade uh -huh. program. Um, it is right now. It's a matching program, so it's only up to a thousand dollars. But if they spend two thousand, then we would match it up to a thousand dollars. Of course, it does have to fit into our downtown design guidelines right. in order for them to be approved. So it has to be a historic preservation-based um, upgrade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because one option that we may could use to spur some, some cleanup and or some redevelopment is to offer a facade grant similar to what she's saying. We would cap it at a certain amount, mm -hmm. 500 thousand, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500, and then if the property owner comes in and makes improvements to the facade, our money would match theirs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly an arsenal that we could use. Yeah. Absolutely great. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, thank you very thank much. You so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. Um, Mr. Clavin was supposed to be here for Team Hungry. Um, I think one of his kids is under the weather, so that may be why. But if he does come in, uh, we can just slide him back in. But it will be the same uh, thing that he has done uh, about this time last year. He's, he'll come in and talk about the economic impact of the uh, Team Hungry. A craft fair that they do and then ask for a waiver for our fees for the um, for the monthly Sharpers market so we'll just hold that <clears throat> uh, until he gets here uh, next item is our approval of the minutes for our special call meeting on January the 23rd I see one thing that needs to be corrected on there I don't know if you caught it or not what's that it has council member Teagle moved to approve the minutes and had Councilman Teagle second the motion. I did not catch that. He's okay. in two places at once. Well, I mean, it can happen. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'll go back and make I don't know question. who. I think I I'll seconded, but I don't think it. I'll have to look it up. Okay, that's a good catch. Thank you. I no, I did not catch I that. I couldn't have stuttered. Okay. You couldn't have. <laughs> right. I'll go make it. I'll go back and make that correction for the report.
I'll make a motion to accept. All right. With the uh, recommended changes? Yeah. Of course, yeah. Okay. All right. Alex has the first. Second. Uh, Stan has the second. All in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Oh. Uh, next item on the agenda is to review our January 2023 20, budget. Floyd, I'll let you take over for that one. Okay. Well, appreciate it. 8% of the year is already done. Wow. Can you believe that? Right. How quickly it is. <laughs> and as a result, though, we're looking again at 10% um, of budgeted income has come in, and 6% of the um, anticipated revenues or uh, expenses have gone out. So we're already starting it off healthy. Um, what is not reflected in here, because we just cut the check Thursday last week, is the last payment for the renovation of community center was done. Okay. And it came in under expectation. So we're going to have savings with our expenses as that as well. Um, you can see what we're looking at. I've added an extra line. Uh, our printer, that will be another subject soon. <laughs> uh, but I added another extra line that you'll see on your far right on each of the last two pages, and that will show you where we stand line item by line item with anticipated revenues or expenses throughout the year. So you can see what is coming in strong versus what is not yet shown. And if you have a zero, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just means it hasn't come in yet. Mm -hmm. um, under our expenses, we already are over budget with our gas utility. 132 right off percent that's because we did not get the bill for 2022 until this year mm. so that's actually paying for last year is what and it's also more of a of a purchase of gas and then of course gas is higher right and so it just came in higher i wanted to bring that up to you yeah. um this is not specific to january's budget in itself but when we go back to look at the right-of-way trimming and the right-of-way cutting, I want to make sure that when we go into 23 that we go back and look at the per monthly charge. Because remember how we had the public works employee at the first part of 22, mm -hmm. and then we had to go, we went in about four months, and then when we redid the conversation, we, we re redrew the conversation with Auburn Valley, we had it at a higher monthly rate because we had less of the year to go, but they had a little bit more work <coughs> to do. You remember that? I, do. I want to make sure that we're going off the correct monthly total when we look at our numbers. I'm fairly certain we are. Okay, we, we are. Okay. Look at it again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to <coughs> just I saw it just right here in the well, lawn care. Well, if you're looking at lawn care, so there are two under lawn care. You have right of way, and then you have lawn care. Lawn care is basically your yards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right of way is just that right of way. Yeah. But also, um, I'm glad you brought that up. So what you may be seeing is um, Arbor Valley is cutting the yard every month. Mm -hmm. And right. they did not send invoices for two of those months. Oh, right? Okay. And so yeah. what's happened is they caught up on us here. Now, I've already projected the numbers, and we're going to still come under budget off of this one, meaning that we're not going to be over okay. expense, okay. short of something yep. unforeseen. Yep, yep, yep. So I think you'll be fine here, but this catching up for 2022 okay. is fine. Yeah, and I remember you mentioning that now mm -hmm. that you, you say it was two months in addition to January, that that makes sense. I remember mm -hmm. you mentioning that. Thank you. Sir. All right. Do we have any questions on the budget? A comment. Uh, it would be helpful if you could if you could highlight or mark over to the left any of these items that are we're falling behind that we can do something about as a, as opposed to just timing timing's meaningless timing is meaningless so you know if, uh, if there are things right. that that are costed that are you know if it's if it's more expensive than we thought or less expensive mm -hmm. you know we need to focus on that i would think i would think so too so i really do keep a track on these things but i haven't brought up those yet because they haven't really warranted it yet um and whenever they do is whenever i Bring it up, like for instance, when it came down to the Boston gas, which is over budgeted. Um, but some of these are going to be fixed, like revenues, for instance, that we may not even see until October, kind of just the way they do their payments. Yeah. So, but if I do see something that's sort of alarm bells to me, I'll be glad to bring it up. Okay. Another thing, too, you know, figure out what you want to do about the decimal points. 
of, of what? Like the decimal points. Okay. Because you got them, you got them, some with, some without, and some of the some of the columns have got both. Well, I thought myself taking them out, Tom, but I guess I didn't. All it's right, just, fair it's just a little bit misleading for an old guy. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, Lloyd, you want to take the uh, safe built conversation? Yes, let me get to where I need to be. Safe built with our next one up. I gave uh, information out to each of the council members. So we've had conversations in the past about doing active code enforcement, sort of similar to what Luthersville has. What I've provided is really, uh, if you look at the packet I provided on Thursday, you'll see some of the costs that I've um, kind of calculated together. But really, there's three pages I've just passed out right prior to the meeting about safe code agreements. And you're going to see that the first agreement, first agreement was done in 2018. And it lists a number, a series of um, services that Safe Build is to provide. Do you have that one? Mm -hmm. The 2018 okay. agreement? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So it's providing a, a number of services that Safe Build already provides. The problem is that it's passive code enforcement. It's whenever somebody calls and says there's a problem, right. you know, then we have to kind of get them to go out and sort of chasing. Right. Amendment one changes the, the scope of it in the sense that first it does provide additional help to us. Whenever somebody comes in and wants to, um, I don't know, tear down a house, want to build a new house, things that, I'm not a building official, so I have spent, like one of our houses, I was spending several days reading building code and not even quite sure what I'm reading. Right. We need to really turn it over into the hands, in my opinion, of the professionals. Right. Also, because code enforcement is such an issue, and it has been discussed, this brings in active code enforcement. So what does it mean? It means that they're going to charge $60 an hour, and if I can just get my key on the right, I got numbers of papers everywhere, and I'm just trying to find where I need to be. I want to talk to you guys straight. Yeah, apologize about that. What it means is, and I provided this page in your packet, what it means is that uh, Safe Bill for the next three months would come out um, two days a month uh, for eight hours a day for three months, $60 an hour. But by doing that, it would be $2,880. Then from there, they'd come out one day a month for eight hours. For the remainder of the year, which right now would be eight more months at 60 an hour. That would get code enforcement going at the first three months with um, earnestness, is a good way to put it. And then eight, those eight months and following would be maintaining code enforcement. But that's them coming out and basically taking on the ball, doing what they need to do. So that has been discussed. It would have the professionals coming out, doing what they do. I believe this is the similar arrangement that Luthersville has. That's what I specifically asked. They could kind of mirror what they do. We have 2000 budgeted in our current budget. I'm looking at a cost of 6720, so I would need uh, 4720 at least in order to come out of contingency to pay for it. Here's the catch. Costs have also risen. If you look at that three page I just gave over prior to the meeting, all of the fees have increased by 3%, yes. All of them have increased by 3%. And so we're going to be looking at cost increases for some of these services starting immediately this year and then for active code enforcement and the additional help that we need will go up another 3% next year. So we're going to be looking at costs that are going to be coming in. So I have a, I have a question. When they come out twice a month, what, what are they coming out to do? Basically, arriving the town and looking for in, uh, code infractions. Okay, in writing so, actual infractions. My okay. understanding, yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can we guide them at all? Can we guide them? Can we guide them? Sure, we can. We're the municipality, so mm -hmm. if, I would need to know what kind of guidance we're looking for. But so that would be under as requested. Code as requested. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, what question. we would do in that case is we'd give them an address and say we think this is an issue, and then they would come out, take a look at it, and then 
concur or not and then right. do the right. regulation. So we have, we have both the ability. We can call up and say there's an address we need you to look at, but also they would be actively out here. We're going to receive a report from we them? Can, like, we, so say they come out you know, the first month? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, in fact, the part of the... Month, is there going to be a report from you know, what they found? I mean, so on that third page, Alex, under yeah. as requested code enforcement services, mm -hmm. um, and also under permit, by the way, uh, they can do reporting. That's number six for the uh, permit technician. And number 11, provide agreed upon reports to demonstrate performance against all set measures. Okay. So we request that. That's what's included, yes. We can yeah. request okay. it, and we would have to tell them what we're looking for, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, we definitely want to see that. And are we looking at 3% every year ongoing? I mean, what's the term of our... It, it's ongoing term. until we terminate, they terminate with a 90-day termination. 90-day at will kind yes. of thing? Okay. Um, Floyd, with this 3% increase, how does that impact our current fee schedule? Are we should be close to okay with it? We're close to okay. Close to okay? But I think, okay, because I anticipated that question, but I don't really have a great way to answer it. Okay. So, for instance, the, the biggest factor that I think is when we're talking about one hour minimum, what happens if you go over, and now you're at two hours right. or three, right? Yeah. But since I've been here, I don't believe we've ever gone over one hour minimum. Right. So I don't know that that's truly a factor, but I'm willing to say I don't know. But right. I think what I can say is that we start maintaining and tracking this, and if we again see that it's starting to become an issue, we bring it back forward. Right. Uh, that's how I think that right. is probably the better approach. Yeah. And have you had the conversation with Safe Built as to when this would start? When we start in February? When we start in March? What do you? They're looking for opinion? council approval, and then from there we can tell them when to start. Okay. 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 Um, and just just so council is aware, we already have two thousand dollars in the budget. Your approval tonight would be to reallocate. You're from contingency, to, yes. You uh, want to reallocate I, the full six from contingency. I, I think if we went the full six, we could certainly afford it, and I think it would give us some buffer in case we do have some of these run-ins with these minimal hour charges. Okay. Um, so, with council's approval, we can go ahead and, and coordinate uh, Safefield to come out during the month of February. Um, as Floyd says, we, we've got the money uh, in our budget, we've got it in our contingencies. Uh, we got the over. We we had the initial amount in our. We had an initial amount in our budget, but we also have the additional amount in our contingency as a budget. That's right. And I would say February or as soon as um, practical from a safe quote perspective as well. Absolutely. I think I've meant it that way. Okay. And I guess this matches up pretty good with our municipal court. We have two thousand uh, already budgeted for municipal court. That was from 500 last year, so I think we can keep our municipal there until we find the need to raise that number up. Yeah. Okay. And we'll have, we, I mean, unless they just come to us with a whole bunch of cases the first month, we will have some lead time into the municipal court right. area, so we'll know if the prices start going up. Yeah. And I will tell you, I, my thinking is that if we may get a lot of cases at the beginning, but right. these may be ranging from cut your grass to right. build a house. Right. So it really depends on what they're able to do, and I think some of that will weed out as it goes to. Yeah. Mm. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, could I get a motion, uh, if it pleases council, to re request a reallocation from contingency of $6,000 to uh, professional services-code enforcement? So we don't need to we don't need a motion to accept this amendment one. Yeah, you need one, right? Yeah, we need that. We need yeah. that. Yeah. So it's really not just the reallocation of the budget, budget, right? Two motions. Okay. Right. Motion yes. to approve and then motion to reallocate. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. motion to approve first. Yeah. I mean, I'll make a motion to accept the amendment. Okay. One. And the I'll agreement. second. Okay. All right. So Alex has the first. Elizabeth has the. Elizabeth has the second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. 
All right, and now a motion to reallocate money from contingency to professional services dash co <coughs> Remind me of that. What's the number again? Uh, 4, 6,000. 6, 6, 6, okay. All right, Stan has second. the motion. Tom has the second. All in favor? Thank you very much. And it was 5-0 on both those motions, is that uh, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. I appreciate uh, it. I will pause right here before we go to the copy machine replacement. Mr. Flavin, would you like to talk to us a little bit about Team Hungry? Congratulations! I thought somebody was sick. Two or two. Oh, okay. sorry. Okay. So, um, I would like to come before us. First of all, thank you for allowing Team Hungry to be a part of Charlottesville Market Hall. Uh, uh, as you know, last year we really weren't able to do anything because of the construction and the rain, and so we just kind of put a pause on. Uh, but we're excited to try to bring it before you again and do it again. And we are asking that you would waive the, uh, the rental fee for a nonprofit organization. We have um, the dates already down. We're going to continue to stay with the third Saturday of every month, starting in April. And we'll keep it at from 10 to 2. We will not do any night markets, uh, whereas the vendors chose that they didn't like that time. And even Santa Claus is going to be coming again. Um, in December. That night went very well. Uh, and just um, <coughs> what we'd like to do, also presenting that, if, if you approve, is to do more things with the town. Uh, <coughs> we did book fair, just to do more things, uh, coordinate that, and try to get more foot traffic and more awareness of what's going on. Uh, our students, again, Team Hungry is an organization that's run by students. If it's not student-led or student-run, we don't do it. And so they are really right now working on uh, putting together music and they're going around all the schools to have the arts teachers, uh, and choirs come in here to highlight our local uh, students that are here. So I thought that was a very good idea. And then they also wanted to highlight and organize things with nonprofit organizations in light of really what just happened this last weekend uh, where we sent someone, one of our interns, to the nonprofit organization. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's GO. Um, but that's kind of what they would like to do, and I'd like you to, to consider waiving that fee. And we'll just be doing it from April to December. And I'm open to any questions about what we do or anything of that. Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. All right. So, all right. so we have so Elizabeth had the um, <coughs> Elizabeth had the first, and then Alex had the second. I think Tom had the second. Actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Did Tom have the second? Stan. Oh, Stan. Oh, Stan. Okay. Okay. Somebody has a yes direction. I do have something to, to add to this, mm -hmm. by the way. In fact, I literally just got the schedule. But one thing I think that we ought to consider is that we've already started taking reservations, mm -hmm. and we may already have some for yes. that third. So yeah. we need to that's, that's amend it as well. Yeah. Amend it so it's not always pending. For pending. Scheduled. Yeah. Scheduled. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor of waiving the fees for Team Hungry? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council, mm -hmm. for that. I, I really appreciate it. Team Hungry has been yeah. a, a great partner, not just with the activities out there, but just. The different things they do in the community, not just here, but at the school and then just uh, around. Yeah. Um, Mr. Flavin, I, I appreciate it. I see the work that you put into it. Um, everything from decorating trees to, to, to dragging out coffee bars to, to everything else. And we enjoy it. And we're bringing a group 17 Friday down in Nicaragua. And wow. so we're working with an orange down there. And so we're actually the first American group to do that. But it's really worth Awesome. So, uh, if you ever want to go, you can come with me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even a daughter who's in my class. Well, and, you know, she might could talk her into it. She'd probably I'd be like, oh, yeah, let's go. Right? <laughs> She'd probably do it. 
Thank y'all very much for that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so jumping back into the agenda, uh, into new business. Floyd, again, yep. I'm going to put you up for the copy machine replacement. All right, perfect. Uh, before the meeting, I gave everybody a sheet looks like this. Thought I would make it a little bit clearer for us because we have a pretty big agreement that's in front of us. Town currently has a service agreement that has been ongoing for a number of years with Toshiba. Uh, recently, we were contacted by Toshiba asking if we had any interest in upgrading our, our cock machine. Mm -hmm. And we were provided information which is in your packet. So, Brad already pointed out something. It's not a mistype. It is what it is. And this sheet, you'll see in red, sort of in the first box, it'll say that according to a 2012 quote, the last time the machine was purchased was in 2005. Now, that's because I have a 2012 quote, but I don't show where it was actually purchased in the minutes. Ah. So we're sort of kind of, we're kind of backing our way into how old is this machine? Right. Did a little bit of research, we found out this machine was first manufactured in 2011, and we're sort of guesstimating that it was purchased around 2012. Every time a technician comes out, they tell us it's about a 15-year-old machine. I think it's a little bit younger than that, huh. but nonetheless. Some of the things we experience are things like what you literally see in your packet whenever you open it up and it's gray and light gray and there's not a lot we can do with it. Um, today was a work of art to try to get it to print. If you don't believe me. Oh, I've dealt with it before. I, I, if you don't believe me, the proof is in that room and you can see all the papers I did print and turned to fucking an accordion. Yeah. Okay. So it's time that that printer is past time. Also, it's the only one we have. So what we also discovered today, not that it's a new discovery, but it became reality, is whenever it was down, we in the office could not print anything. Mm. Okay? So here's what we're looking at. We're looking at the current service agreement. It bought a that copy machine in there for approximately $8,200. That's off of the quote, and the quote doesn't even have the right kind of copy machine that's currently in there. It's just oh. based off that quote. We do get uh, charged on a, on a quarterly basis for our black and white prints and our, copy, uh, our, our um, color copies on a quarterly basis. So we get charged for every time we hit print. Yeah. A color print is 16 cents. Black and white print is just over 3 cents. Okay. <coughs> we typically have on a quarter, I looked at all the different quarterly statements we have. 304 um, is an average of the numbers of color copies we have, and about 5,000 is the numbers of black and whites that we get. Quarterly. Quarterly. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you roll it back to monthly, you're going to see, and monthly is right next to it, you're going to see that really it's about 76 color copies a month, mm -hmm. and then 1,200. Right. So the cost is on a monthly basis $56 roughly, quarterly, the average 223. Okay? So the new proposal follows beneath it, and for 13147 and some change, we can get two copy machines. One is going to replace the big one, and another one that I've earmarked for either Julie or for Angie is going to be sort of whenever I'm doing printing work, they can do work, mm -hmm. and we're not kind of waiting on staggering on each other. But also, if one should go down, we can utilize the other. Right. The, the billing uh, has changed. It's no longer quarterly, it's monthly. Okay. So what do you get for each month? Well, you get a minimum invoice each month of $103. Okay, that's going to be a monthly average or a quarterly average like we're accustomed to of 412. 412 is higher than 223, so it's going to be more expensive. But what do you get out of it? You get 500 copies, color copies a month. Wow. Okay. If you look at the average, we usually do six or seventy-six a month, so we can start running our color copies much more, and in my opinion, looking even more professional. Okay, you can also start running uh, black and whites at five thousand of these, and again, our average is typically um, um, on a monthly basis one thousand two hundred and forty-eight. Okay. So it's a little bit more expensive. But at the end of the day, I think it brings a newer machine, and honestly, I think it brings a, a, a better presentation to mm -hmm. what we did. 
And the new machine is also going to be have additional technology like scanning, yeah. scan mm -hmm. directly to your email box. Right. And, and I wouldn't say it's new, but it's included. We already have that. Mm -hmm. But it's <clears throat> but end of the day, I think it's just when you're 12 years older with newer mm -hmm. technology, yeah. it's just going to mm -hmm. look better anyway. Well, what I'm looking forward to is being able to scan something directly to my email box. Well, the way I have to do it now is I scan it to me and I scan it. <laughs> and, then he's, and then he emails it to me. So right. hopefully with the new machine, it'll go straight to yeah. who Now that, I will be scan. honest with you, I'm not sure how that works because you're off at your house. I'm not sure how they would pull that. Right. I don't know. Yeah. We'll figure it out. But, but just letting you know, um, there's also a cost of 250 for the removal of this machine. Do we know what year machine this is that we're going to get? My understanding, but I'll be glad to get clarity. My understanding is it's going to be as best out of the box as possible, like brand new. So yeah. 22 or 23. I just probably. don't, yeah, I just don't want them to, you know, give us one made in 2012. <laughs> no, neither I mean, do I. Otherwise, since uh -huh. since the 2012 <laughs> quote, the copier was purchased in 2005, I mean, you know. Right. I mean, if we do this, I, I want to make sure that we get, like... Well, my, I'll be glad to clarify with the, with the salesman, but yeah. but it was, to, from every conversation I've had, this is brand new, as new as it gets. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Does it come with a service agreement? It does. And that service agreement is the costs of the print uh, that we have. So it is a minimum of $103 a month, so it is going to be more than your customer to paint, but it provides you more as well. Does break down, they have a client and fix it and they charge, it's already included yeah. in it. They come and fix it, yes, sir. And you're talking about two machines. <clears throat> two machines, yes, sir. One, uh, so one's I, should, like I shouldn't say one's, yeah, it's, it's not like it's two copy machines. One's more like a desktop printer, and the other is your copy machine. Mm -hmm. Now, are you buying the, the printer for the for the ladies? Are you buying that separately, or is that included in this? It's included thing? in here. It's included in the wow. 13000 Okay. Mm -hmm. Good deal. How, How much, is, is, how much is, it? is it by itself? They did not give me an individual price. How soon would they be able to deliver? I would have to call them and ask, but I would assume within a week. Where are they coming from, Atlanta? I think McDonough, I think. And they'll take this old one and just be done with it? For 250 yes, sir. <laughs> now, here's the thing. So in green, on the bottom, I asked for three parts to a motion, but I need to amend that, and here's why. I asked for part one to approve the purchase of the copy machine using ARPA funds for $13,147.50. That gets us the hardware. That gets us the setup. Uh, to remove, um, to approve the payment of the removal fee and for the increase to the budget from for uh, printing expenses from the approved $1,000, 1500 because it is more money now for it. And that would be for the remainder of 2023. And to authorize me, or perhaps mayor, to sign the agreements. But I want to add one more. In talking to uh, Brad prior to the meeting, I want to get clarity before we go. Utilizing ARPA funds, I want to make sure we've met all the ARPA requirements. So I would request this motion be made, but contingent on ensuring uh, through legal that this is, in fact, um, approved with the purchase with ARPA. Okay. And that we've met all the requirements. So we don't have to, for instance, go for three quotes on this. Right. The reason I haven't thought we needed three quotes is because we have the ongoing service agreement. But right. now that ARPA is involved, we want to make sure all the mm -hmm. T's are crossed and I's are dotted. Mm -hmm. Right. I used to be in the business, copier business from Minolta. Yes, sir. It's an extremely cutthroat business. I mean, the reason you would want to get some quotes is because they'll drop the price, drop the price, drop the price, drop the price to get the business. Um, and they're, they're, they're just notorious for that. It's super cutthroat. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's okay. I'll throw that in. Mm -hmm. Sure. Absolutely. And that's why I want to make sure that we have mm -hmm. everything pulled together on that. Mm -hmm. All righty. So we'll just start from the top. Um, if council wishes, can we get a motion to approve the purchase of the copy machine using the ARPA funds at 13147.50, assuming that the uh, passes it through legal? And yes, it's a uh, legal muster. Yes. I'll make a motion. All right, Elizabeth has the first. I'll second. <clears throat> All right, Stan has the second. All in favor? <clears throat> Unanimous, thank you. Um, second, an, an adi another motion that will approve the payment of the removal fee as proposed and increase our expenditure in the budget from 1000 
to $1,500 for the remainder of the 2023 printing costs. Get a motion? All right. I'll make that motion. All right. Tom has the first. I'll second. All right. Alex has the second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And then finally, to authorize our town administrator to sign all copies, purchase, and service agreements as proposed by uh, Toshiba. I'll make it. All right. Stan has the first. I'll Tom second. has the second. All in favor? Unanimous again. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yes, thank you very much. So that concluding our uh, new business, do we have any questions on any of the new business from council or from the public? Okay. Um, old business going to 39 Main Street update. Um, no, no new information on the Beckham House. Um, we're still working through the demolition quotes and, and materials, um, but I, I don't have any updates on the Beckham House at this point. Yes, sir. Uh, I talked to my bug man, uh, Bun, with the Peach mm -hmm. and they're going to send somebody over here Wednesday to look at it to see if we need to, for, to, to uh, fumigate it. Okay. I'll go by a little Turin, at Turin Pest Control and get a quote, get them to come mm -hmm. over too. Uh, they seem to know what they were talking, what they were doing. They they ask all the right questions. Good. Okay. So they'll be here Wednesday, but I'll need to get a key to it. Okay. Well, right. Yeah, they're going to be here at 9 o'clock in the morning. So I, do I need to come Tuesday? Tomorrow? You can come Tuesday. You can come 9 o'clock. I'll be here. Okay. Well, they'll be here 9 o'clock Wednesday. Okay. Excellent. <coughs> um, on the back parking lot, so right now we're still working on the punch list items. Many of those same things that I showed you on the list from last month. We, we literally had almost three weeks worth of rain. Yeah. And they just, just nobody's been able to do anything. Um, talked to Public Works uh, earlier this morning, um, earlier today, and he is going to try to get some stuff done this week things like striping he's going to try to um, get the conduit put in for, for replanting the poles um, one thing that he is going to do uh, this week that, that we discovered during the construction of the parking lot is for some reason there is a void some kind of void up underneath the pavilion towards the left hand side if you're standing in the parking lot facing main street they went ahead and made a pressure cut during construction to see if that would if that would relieve some of the cracks that, that were getting out there. But when they when they punched, when they cut it, they could see that there's a little bit more of a void. So they're mm -hmm. going to come out here and they're going to pull up part of the pavilion and then report it to fill in that void that has started to form up underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, Is that from all the rain we've had? This looks like, no sir, it looks like it's older than that. Okay. Um, you can see the way that the, the, the pavilion has literally just cracked almost like that. Mm -hmm. And they just need to get in there and look at it and, and see. And the plan right now is to, is, to, is to pull up the part of it that's cracked, fill in the, the void where stuff is settled, and then re-concrete re it. And then we'll have to stay off of it for two or three days while it cures. I'm going to check the calendar and make sure we don't have any rentals out there, mm -hmm. which we typically don't. Right. Um, but we'll, we'll block it off and everything. But it's just, you know, them paying attention and being diligent about their work and saying, hey, we need to check into this. Doing something, that little something didn't work. And now they're going to go ahead and poke around some more. Mm -hmm. um, have, you, have you got a list of all the things on, that we need to have done out mm -hmm. there? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Most of it is in that third tab that I handed y'all last last month, and then I've also got a couple of other things that are that will be added to that list, so we can keep track of it, mm -hmm. either for a work group to do it or public works to do it or us to do it mm -hmm. internally. Mm -hmm. When you when you have, if you can think to, when you have that conduit put down for the lights, keep in mind that somebody's going to be coming in there to put a fence in, mm -hmm. so you need to make sure that they don't you don't run the 
conduit right there at the property line. Yeah. They, I don't, I don't think they are. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the light poles are going to be in the little islands that are sticking out, so it shouldn't even be on the side of the sidewalk he's going to be on. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Well, it's worth asking. But it's certainly worth asking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but other than that, as far as the parking lot, it's mainly just a punch list that, that we're working on. And that's, you know, doing the sod, smoothing out around the container. Um, I did see that Clements put the privacy screen up in between the two yard, in between the two parking lots. That looks really good. They haven't done the, the, the pit yet, but mm -hmm. that'll probably be, I would hope, later on this week. Mm -hmm. Just because they got that one done mm -hmm. over there. Um, but as far as the parking lot, it's just waiting for the rain and everything to dry up. Yeah. Basically enough. All right. Any other questions on new business or old business? I talked to breaking ground on the ten trees. Uh huh. And they're gonna they're gonna send a guy over here to look at it. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought they would do that today, but they didn't. Yeah. I'll give them a call tomorrow morning. Yeah. But uh, she said that the, I mean, the, <coughs> thought that the trees were like 100 bucks a piece, and it'd be 100 dollars to plant them. Mm -hmm. That's about right. But you're not going to get six foot tall trees. You're going to mm -hmm. get like 20 gallon buckets as opposed to 30 gallon buckets. Okay. So you know, it'll. It's a season. It's mm -hmm. another season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay, so 100 per tree plus 100 per to plant them? 200 bucks a tree planted. And that's what their people plant it? Yeah. Okay. And you figure half of that, mm -hmm. a thousand to the trees. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. When you think about plant, you know, us, us planting, we're having, you know, slave dig all in the land. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to. You'd have to get dirt and amendments and that type of thing. Yeah. Things that they would bring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and if we plant it, it may not be covered by right. their guarantee. I didn't ask that question, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. That's a good question to ask. Yeah. Yeah, we'll ask. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out before we. Yeah, because they do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and we've done this before, and it has saved us a couple, three, four hundred dollars yeah. out there. In, in replacement costs because we yep. had two or three things replaced over over the last couple of years. Y'all want to check see if Arbor Valley can do it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, I just I, I told I laid it out to her like, you know, give us an idea what it's going to cost and we'll get a quote for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. For the whole kit and caboodle and yeah. different pieces of it as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Now, do you want us to reach out to him or do you want to talk to Arbor Valley? Oh, uh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, you All don't. Right. I don't know. Floyd, can you um, add that to your list to ask Arbor, get a quote for Arbor Valley on the Leland Cypresses mm -hmm. down there, or Conifer Tree that necessarily have to be Leland? Privacy. Privacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions on our on our new or our old business? All right. Um, public comments. I need a street sign, <laughs> Mars Williams Circle. I don't know what happened to it. You know, the nice new street sign uh -huh. put up. Yeah. And one day I look up and there's no street sign. Uh -huh. Oh, is the stop sign gone too, or just the street sign? No, I think the stop sign's there. <laughs> I'm not sure, but <laughs> I stop every time to go to traffic. But yeah. you wanted to say William Circle, right? <laughs> right. Okay. So we got two or three that don't say that. <laughs> okay. Well, you got you got oh some black signs you mean? Well, no, we got some that say Highway Five and Fifty Four. <laughs> Highway 45. Use, one of them says Highway your 45. Blinker. Really? <laughs> We've got one that says the, um, what is it, the Red Community Center? Literally, it's, it's the Red Community Center, I think. Oh, my gosh. It's what one of them says, yeah. We had it replaced. But yeah, it was, it said, I think it said Red Community Center. Oh, my gosh. Right. Miss Polly? Yes, if you insist. <laughs> I don't have a question. I just got a comment, kind of a thought in passing. And it's based on last week when you said, uh, you mentioned fairness, and Alex asked the question, what is it? And then you brought up transparency. Mm -hmm. I went back through, we've been talking about a lot to do, and looked at them, and I could find three or four places in the 
documents and in the ordinance it mentioned, um, it mentioned, uh, one place was very, very vague. It said somebody may do this, mm -hmm. which then you may not, which is very vague. The other one says, um, it mentioned direct relationships or implied relationships. Mm -hmm. One of them was the one we mentioned last week, which he clarified. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one on, oh, I don't see it, but anyway, there's a, what I'm coming at is, you've got all these documents and they, not, they don't jive. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned them in the, um, what's, the one, what's the one you do when you get your contracts? The procurement? Mm -hmm. You will go do something with that. It seems to me they'd be a place that you can kind of put all that stuff together so that everything's, you can't change the chart, I know that. Mm -hmm. Everything would say the same thing and there mm -hmm. wouldn't be as much way to interpret different ways. Mm -hmm. So, are, now, are you talking about our ordinance or are you talking about our policies? You can't change the chart, I'm not talking about that. Right. The ordinance, the ethics ordinance, mm -hmm. is one of the places I look. And by the way, their term ran out two years ago. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have an ordinance committee, but we do have an <coughs> ordinance. Mm -hmm. And the other, I can give you the numbers on them if you want them, I just didn't think you cared that much to look right now. Uh, section 1-18, and that's meeting procedure, and that talks about absenteeism and conflict of interest. There's no definition of any of these except one that tells you what that would be. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is section 2-13, I mean uh, that's in the Code of Ethics. Mm -hmm. And then 2-9-10 and, and the Code of Ethics. And they just, I can see why there would be confusion, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's my comment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that once we get the ordinance codified, that will put a lot of this side by side, and, and we'll find the may or shall or the, 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 the wording that you, that you reference. So and also definitions, because when it says <coughs> one thing, Family, for instance, could be anything. Now you've got families, you've got blended families, you've got all kind of families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So family now doesn't mean the same thing it did right. in 2007 when these things were adopted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. One of them, one of them was earlier than that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, in, yeah. We can, we'll certainly go back and, and take a look and see if we can see see what you're seeing and 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 maybe try to clean it up. But I really think that once we can talk to Municode to get the codification started, hopefully that'll show us where the undefined words are. But you do talk about a meeting about this, and so that mm -hmm. would be a thing to bring up at a meeting about sure. it. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, yes, thank you. Sure. Anything? Okay. All right. Mr. Jones, Administrator's Minutes. Do we have calling your council? Dad gum it. All right, sorry y'all. Uh, polling your council, I'll start right here to my immediate right. I'm Ms. good. Good? I'm good. All right. Mr. Teagle? I'm good. Mr. Parton? No. Mr. Edge? Oh, right. Well, it turns out this Mr. Much Jones, oh, like I was all right. saying. What do you know? <laughs> Okay, all right, so thanks for passing the uh, safe belt and the coffee machine. Those mm -hmm. are two big things I can get off my, yes, my thank plate, you for by the way, so I appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. Um, we use, for our accounting software, um, SAGE program. There's been some discussion about should we change it to, say, QuickBooks or some other version, but quite frankly, I'm a little reticent on doing that because it's sort of like reinventing the wheel and starting it all yeah. back up again. Yeah. So we have received notification from SAGE that we need to renew. Mm -hmm. We have currently the ability up until um, February 15th to renew at half price. And that half price is going to be under $500. Mm -hmm. So that certainly falls under mayor's prerogative to, to mm -hmm. spend, but I want to bring it to council for this reason. Next year, that uh, ability to get half price is going to be gone, and it will rise to 950 mm -hmm. and possibly even more than that. So that's going to be something we're going to have to start budgeting every year. Mm -hmm. They have quit going with getting a blanket license. You have to renew it now every single year. Mm -hmm. So 
this may be a time as we go through the year to see if we really want to stick with sage or not but i think for now we've already started the year and i'm frankly just a little bit reticent about rebuilding it all yeah again so i'm just letting first of all council know that we're going to have to do this for 450 um that may even go to five but also it'll be coming up in the future budgets as well yeah just keeping everybody abreast of that yeah okay uh also today and then i'll be done we were approached by the lady who does barbie beach oh she is Fun. working now with coweta county special olympics oh. and they have asked us if we are interested in putting our name on a t-shirt t-shirt is right here okay. there it is that's the back and you can already see sponsors that are on the back and they're okay. asking us to be a sponsor okay the reason uh, the, the, here's the price range that we have for a hundred to four hundred ninety nine dollars we can be a bronze sponsor that puts us here small friends hmm. 100 to 499 why the distinction between 100 and 499 yeah. i didn't talk to her i don't know the real answer right but since we're all together the price continues that for silver sponsors 500 to 999 puts us here okay and if we choose to go to a thousand or more we get big gold up here now, none of these numbers I've talked about are technically in our budget. So my question is, does the council have interest? And if so, where would you like to be? What is the gift? Coweta Special Olympics. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh. <clears throat> I was just giving the price sheets. And I figured while we're here, I would throw it out there yeah. see if there's interest. Yeah, I, get, I get clarity on uh, this I think we're going to have to sort of, the way that it was approached to me is that we're going to have to start kind of going quick. That's why I brought it up now. It's a one-time deal. As far as I know. We still yeah, so it, she did not actually directly talk to me. I um, basically got it. And yeah, we're they, all together. Did they drop off a flyer or anything? Just this. I bet I got three of the same. Oh, okay. I can pass it if you'd like to see. You don't know anything about this? I was going to call uh, Alan over here, the mayor over there, and see if they know anything about it. Yeah, I've got to call him. They are right in cahoots with the Quicks. Yeah, did, did, did Turin sponsor? She indicated that she was working with Charles in this oh. case. But then again, I didn't directly right. have a conversation right. with him. Bo Ray is his listed in the bottom of the flyer. I'll ask them when I talk to them tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So should we say something contingent on the conversation? Okay, so let's get them all t-shirts. No. Okay. I mean, I'm good. I just right. want to, so what's the due date for it? Did she give a due date? There was not really much that, so when she came to in the office, I was elsewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the event's the 26th of April. Oh. I normally wouldn't bring something up like this, but I think that there is sort of a fast move yeah. on this thing. Yeah, it's to uh, get all the participants' T-shirts, the mm -hmm. athletes and the teachers yeah. and the mm -hmm. and the volunteers. Yeah. So that's the gist of it. <laughs> What's the time with Barbie Beach? No, she's the lady who owns Barbie Beach. That's the person she's, she's the one who brought it. Maybe she has a yeah, Linda, Linda's family member or something that's um, a, a affiliated. The t-shirts for Special Olympics. Okay, but I don't see her on here at all. Yeah. Yeah. Barbie Beach. Yeah, she's on. She's on the t-shirt. Yeah, she's a thousand dollar. Yeah, but that but there's but that doesn't say she's doing it. That's just she's right. a thousand dollar no. donor. I just don't see her on there. So, who's Bo Ray? Do y'all know who Bo Ray is? Nope. Sure not. CCSO. He's the local coordinator of the Special Olympics. Yeah, I wouldn't right. be. I, I wouldn't be opposed to being a bronze sponsor or something. But no, neither. I mean, if, I, if it I, helps I, him I out, it just was a little. I recognize it's kind of fast, but it kind of got dropped on me, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to. Sure. Yeah. I, think I mean, it's probably time frame on this. It's under the mayor's, uh, right under. This well, spending you could authorize it. You look into it. And yeah. Authorize yeah. Yeah. sponsor, yeah. and that's yeah. fine. It seems like a you know Special Olympics. I remember being involved with that when I was in high 
high school as well. It's, everyone gets a shirt, you know, at yeah. the end yeah. of the day. Uh, Y'all threw me off for that Barbie Beach thing, but yeah. I actually heard. Yeah, she's just the messenger. <laughs> she's the messenger. The guy that's the coordinator is apparently with the school board or school system, because he's got a, a county to county school email address. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out if the guy's legit or not. Yes, his name's Charles Ray. Yeah. Oh, Ray. I don't know. I got no heartburn over it. Yeah, if you just if y'all yeah. decide to do something, I won't be. Yeah. No one wants to stick with it. Bronze, we'll just keep it under the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just keep yeah. it under that if it seems like the right thing to okay. do. Okay. Maybe just give him a call. You know. Well, I'm going to talk to him, but I want to. I'm sort of on a roll around. Sure. Yeah. Your sure. mom's a sponsor, so. How is she? Yeah. Oh, so there you go. It's probably legit. <laughs> what was that? His mom's a sponsor, so. Oh, there you go. So okay, it's cool. probably legit. Yeah. Oh, Charmy's yeah. back home. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So just keep it under bronze and move right along. Okay. After that, I'm right. done. That sounds good. Good deal. All right, so <clears throat> for mayor's updates, I do have a couple of items. So, um, no offense, Mayor, but I got to split it. I'm, <laughs> five, I'm five minutes past my deadline. Ah, okay, so no worries. It's not because you're doing mayor's updates. No, 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 no. that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Um, so this past week, or in the, within the past week or so, uh, DOT has approved our 2023 LMIG, Local Maintenance Improvement Grant, money from DOT. Uh, if I remember off the top of my head, it's about 6000 in state funds with about 1300 in town funds for our match so we have a total of seventy three hundred dollars from 2023 tell me that's a, that will be added to and available to us for um minor road repairs striping signage and i think i included sidewalks in there okay um as part of this application they approved the money that we spent out of 19 and 20 which combined the sidewalk work, which combined the storm drain replacement, which combines two sign orders, and then also some paving off of Sunset. Yep. Um, they have approved that report. We have submitted, like I said, for striping road repairs, signage and sidewalks for 23. But what this has brought us to is going to change how we're internally how we're doing our minor road repairs. Mm -hmm. Previously, whenever something has come up with roads, we've just said, "Oh, well, let SPLOS pay for it." Mm -hmm. Well, SPLOS we can spend on multiple things: mm -hmm. recreation, cultural and historical events, road, and infrastructure. So we can spend SPLOS on lots of things. Um, LMIG, however, can just purely be spent on local make, local mileage improvement. Yeah. The, the striping, the potholes, and the stuff like that. So what we're going to start doing is for the smaller repairs, we're going to start paying those out of LMIG. Okay. Rather than trying to take small chunks out of it, yeah. out of SPLOS. It just, it, it's going to make it easier on us. It'll help us spend the LMIG a little bit quicker because right. we did roll 19 and 20 into one year got an extension and then in, we did end up using and spending it down <clears throat> it would just make it easier on on us internally if we could spin down LMIG as we go mm -hmm. rather than trying to go back and figure okay well we can do this and we can do yeah. it's just going to be easier yeah. to do it so that will be an internal I think policy change that, that we're going to start implementing just as we are, are paying the bills um, but what LMIG does bring up is what other improvements do we want to do? Mm -hmm. um, I want to bring to council, <clears throat> it will, we will have the actual uh, review and the bids and everything in for next month, but I want to get Main Street and Tarantine restriped. Okay. It's roughly about, I think, 16,000 linear feet of lines mm -hmm. between all four lines. Um, I've got one quote from uh, a county contract, and I'm going to have two others hopefully come in before uh, uh, before at the March meeting. 
Um, from there, I'll just come to you and say, we're gonna get these two roads striped, it'll be this amount, and then we can we can pick the contractor and hopefully have the, the two streets um, cleaned up and restriped. And that will really improve, I think, the visual yeah. of, of, of a little bit of downtown. Yeah. The other thing that we're going to have to do before we strike the roads is we're going to have to come back and, and, and use the motor grader and clean off the edges mm -hmm. of the roadway just to knock off any dirt and whatnot. Up on Tarantine, right there by Miss Patty Lynn Beckham's house, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of red mud and junk that is washing out of their driveway, coming down the street, hitting our speed bump, and then going into the side mm -hmm. and, and down into the ditch. And the fix for that is going to be to, I think, put a, a little bit of an apron right there at the Beckhams, just on our right of way. We're not going to have to, I don't see us making a, a real big apron, but then putting a load of rock down to catch the erosion and red mud that's coming off. Yeah. Once we put that down, I think that, that we can, we'll have to come back and, and pull up part of the edge of the road because we've got some roots coming up underneath it. Mm -hmm. And I would like to talk with the county about how they suggest fixing it. And basically, mm -hmm. I'm just talking about fixing Tarantine from the Red Mud driveway down to the speed bumps mm -hmm. and either do either some grading or do, if we have to put in a little bit of an apron or a little bit of curbing to, to redirect the water off of the roadway, yeah. we're going to start looking at it because yeah. it's just going to continue to wash. It's just going to... Do they have a clogged ditch or a clogged culvert in there? They, they, they don't have any culverts mm -mm. at that know. part. The first culvert doesn't come until you get down to Connie Turner's. Yeah. Right down okay. there. So there's, 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 there's no It's just culvert. a washout. It's just a wash. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's, it's clogging up and it's catching and, and before we come in and have them, I at least want the county to look at it before they come in and, and, right. and do the strike. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by, uh, what do you, you're talking about building a, an apron. An apron. So, like a berm or something. Yeah, kind of, so you know how, okay, so you know how you've got the curve that comes up and then it flattens out for you to, for you to drive the car over and the apron's usually only about like this and it's got asphalt or whatever on the other side of it. That's what I mean. It's just, uh, a it's just an apron. Yeah, like a. Okay. Yeah, and, and and honestly, it would really be there to help hold in the rock because mm -hmm. it's really what the real cure is going to be to put rock down on the driveway. Right, so, but if you don't do something, it's just going to wash the rock out. It, see, exactly. Yeah. And I at least want to get the county to look at it. We couldn't we couldn't use a, the grader and just dig a dig a trench. And then put a we, prob in. we probably could, but we've got a light pole right there between the two lots, and the water meter is just to the north of the light pole, I think. And so my fear would be that if we cut the greater blade down in there, we hit something or snatch something or who knows what. Mm -hmm. But it, it may be that it's, it, 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 the, the correct fix is just to cut a ditch. I don't know, but I, I need to get them to look at it. Yeah. They can tell you. Yeah, mm -hmm. they'll be able to tell. They can tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm a little hesitant about the... The apron and the, the curbing. Yeah, because... Yeah, yeah me like too, a little bit. But I just don't know what they're going to say. But I went out there and I was scraping at the dirt, and we have about this much asphalt up underneath. You know, mm -hmm. The dirt really? is right there. We mm -hmm. have this much asphalt up underneath it. So we've got some edging that we could, we could attach mm -hmm. to, and we can... We can go. So let's, yeah, let's have them out and give them an, give mm -hmm. us an idea of like what we need to yeah, do, and then mm -hmm. we can address it. Okay. Yeah, they, we've got quite a few. I say quite a few. I, I know we've got some culverts underneath driveways that are, that are plugged. Mm -hmm. So I called. Anytime you see one, just call me and give me the address. If it's on the highway, DOT will come in and unclog it. If it's a city street, we can get the county to come out and do it. I've already put one in for 158 Highway 154. I noticed in the big rain, a couple driveways up from yours. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the only one that I've really seen. But if you see some, give, give me the address and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll send them out to fix it. Okay. Um, the, we have the librarian part-time <coughs> position is posted. It's on the website. Um, Floyd, have you gotten any email, uh, resumes from it? No, sir. I put out a call the other week on my Facebook and I got 
I got a couple of hits on it. I got a couple of resumes in. We haven't called anybody in or, or done any interviews yet. Of course, we'll we'll get one of y'all to sit with us on the panel. <coughs> Blue Floyd and I probably and, and one of y'all. So that is out there. So if anybody here or anybody out there knows a good librarian, send them our way. The position's on the on the town's website. What is the um it is 15 hour the the what's the question the librarians pay in hours 12 an hour 12 an hour at 15 hours a week okay uh right now it's tuesday thursday two to six and then one saturday a month okay and of course whoever uh, ends up taking the position we have some flexibility as far as the opening times i would like to keep at least one saturday a month if not more right um, and of course, my hope is that as we um, build up and, and start doing more stuff at the library, we'll have more people come around. We'll yeah. have more demand. Right. Um, the other side of it is I think there are some ways that we can update and upgrade our library space to make it a little more usable. Mm -hmm. Right now, we can fit about 12 chairs in the library mm -hmm. as, it is, mm -hmm. as it is set up. Part of that is because we've got two Actually, we have four back-to-back -back bookcases that are sitting in the center of the room. If we can take those bookcases and rearrange them, not get rid of them, but rearrange them in the room to open up that floor space, we can get between 20 and 24 chairs in the floor, pl floor plan of the library, mm -hmm. which will allow us then to possibly rent it out either for small classes, nonprofit meetings, support group meetings, just more stuff mm -hmm. to happen at the library. Mm -hmm. And it will also take a little bit of the pressure off of the community center because we are rapidly approaching. We're probably, we're, we, we have instructors and classes in here four out of five weekdays. Mm -hmm. We are rented three out of the four weekends a month. Mm -hmm. And so we're not maxing out this space yet. We still have a little bit of flexibility. But the time is, is starting to come for us to begin thinking about thinking about additional space for events and classes, a community facility, mm -hmm. basically. Well, the first thing you want to do is look at look at what you're charging for the for the place now. If you're if you're to the point where you're you're uh, sold out, jack your price up. Well, we're pretty we're pretty competitive. I mean, we're not. I mean, the prices. I don't think we need to adjust the pricing. The pricing right now is is two hundred for six hours or two fifty for six hours. Well, yes, to both. To both. Yeah. Okay. Two hundred if you don't have alcohol and two fifty right. if you do. Two fifty if you do. So we're getting two fifty for six hours. Yeah. Don't we have some people that've been in here for quite some time that haven't had an increase in rate? Um. So our instructors, our legacy instructors, I don't know when they have had an increase. But we have increased their compliance on payment, so we're getting more money in than we have previously. Um, so but they're, so far, they're, they're paying you the old. They're now they're paying you the old rate. Mm -hmm. Yes, paying the old rate consistently. Um, as far as the new instructors that are coming in, I'm pretty sure it's market rate. Um, but. Hmm? So the library improvements, we just, just, you know, we just need to be thinking about the upgrades, um, thinking about the different things that we could do up there, and then just ways to make it happen. Mm -hmm. The other part that we need to think about is parking around the library. Mm -hmm. We're going to have, and that's part of the reason I wanted to get the, this parking lot striped, is I wanted to start looking at how can we do some striping up near the library to add a couple of parking spaces mm -hmm. um, at least in the front but also leave room for loading zone but go ahead and start plotting and planning that out because I like to have that plan ready when the strikers come mm -hmm. I'll bet you a dollar if you start looking at uh, putting in parking places up there mm -hmm. you really don't have room but for a couple yeah probably three or what four. you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to have a handicapped parking spot so basically, you're going to be putting a handicapped parking spot up. Mm -hmm. and there's nothing. There's no other room for anything else. Um, yeah, and that's why we'll have to look at it because yeah. I think I think we can probably do. Well, I don't know. 
look at it because yeah. when you and I looked at it a year mm -hmm. ago, yeah, yeah, and uh, you could angle them mm -hmm. as opposed to having them parallel to the street, mm -hmm. and that would give you an extra one. Mm -hmm. And then that may give us, and, and maybe that extra would be maybe we do the handicap one to where that one is parallel, but then we have the other three at an angle behind it, and then that handicap becomes not only handicap parking but also loading unloading zone. Can you mark any any parking spaces down the driveway to? Uh... Um, I think so, but I would almost rather wait until we do until we renovate that part before we add that because I honestly think that that there will be other improvements that we may have through there. Well, it seems to me it'd be a chicken and egg kind of a thing. Yeah, you know, it's. I, I just I can't I can't bring myself to support building parking places for something that has no demand for parking places. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But we're putting the parking places in before we begin the push that should bring more business. And, and whether and whether we fill those parking spaces up or not, is it'll improve the look of the town and it'll improve the look, especially in that little area and if we have the new stripings up there. Yeah, the Russians had a term for it. It's called Potemkin. Timken. Timken, yeah, look it up. Um, how much money can you get out of that library by having people come in? So, if we rented it out three nights a week for like an evening group meeting or, or session, we could probably get 50 to 100 bucks a night, so it'd be 300 a week times four weeks. If we don't do anything on the weekends, that'd be 1,200. If you can get three, if we can get three, three a week, right? But one of the things that Jeff brought up was working with some of the nonprofits or having a nonprofit yeah. things going on, and and there are over 600 501c3 organizations in Calumet County. We yeah. have a huge nonprofit per capita number, whatever. You gonna charge them? Uh, well, if, uh, at some point we need to, and even if it's just enough to cover time. Well, where else are they meeting? I mean, you know. And if they can get it for twenty or twenty-five bucks a night, right? You know, and where and are they paying that? I mean, are they paying that somewhere else or? <coughs> yeah. But you know, just just making it available and getting it out there, I think will be, you know, be something else to bring more people in here. Bring more folks into town. And I still want to connect the library to the community center through a path. That's one of the things that, that, that I would I would surely love to do. Let's do an underground tunnel. That's way cooler. Zip line. Everybody will rent it out then. That'll the underground tunnel tunnel of Sharpsburg. We can turn it into a stick. Okay, I've got all these great ideas. <laughs> And, and, and I'll be honest, it may be that we decide to expand the library before we decide to ex physically expand the library before we build or add anything over down here. Because we could add, it, it, we could probably add um, another meeting room over the footprint of the courtyard that we've got out there now. Mm -hmm. And it would be probably. 10 by 20, 15 by 20, mm -hmm. but if we stretched it out, mm -hmm. and it would just be just one long room. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, mm -hmm. there, there, we, have, we have some options up there. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can do all this stuff, but I just wonder if you want to, really. What, what's the benefit? What are you going to do? Pick um, up an extra couple hundred bucks a week? Mm -hmm. Well, not so much that as it gives more things, more places for people to gather and more things for folks to do around here. Um, and I realize that without having very many businesses uptown, there may not be a whole lot of demand, but one day there will be. And I would like to have the library ready for that day. But, you know, this is all stuff that, that we'll have time to talk about and time to plan because in any of the any any of the big things that will take you know time yeah. and money and, and, and council action to actually uh, finish off and push through yeah um,
Um, for the parking lot, we've got the punch list, and this will be my last thing. We've got the punch list, and I have started talking to a couple of different groups about doing some art projects out there. Miss Kay's art class is going to do some murals that we will basically attach to the fence out there that will be decorative and pretty and flowers and not cartoonish, but it'll it'll be it'll be childlike for the for the playground out there. And then I want to talk to the high school and the art students about doing some murals and things on this fence over here between us and Arbor Valley. Mm -hmm. um, and just look at the different types of art projects and community things that we could do out here with the park. Because mm -hmm. uh, anytime we can get kids out here, we're going to get their parents out here. Yeah. When we have parties and whatnot, and when people are walking around, it'll you know mm -hmm. add visual beauty to it and, 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 and make it make it a place to gather. You know, we've mm -hmm. got the container out here, which for, I'm happy to say no other town has. You know, painted in the colors of their local high schools and, and, and decorated up, and just building upon that. Can I throw out a suggestion? Sure. <clears throat> So I suggest that we, um, any type of mural or anything that we do, we make it like um, interactive. So um, people come, like, you know, that it's all the rage. I can send you a couple of different examples, but, you know, people come. There's this spot in Nashville that's got these, uh, a set of angel wings, like big wings and small wings, and people come from all over yep. to get their photograph to post on social media with these wings. Mm -hmm. And so we do something like that, that yeah. you know, people okay. attracts people to take a picture, mm -hmm. tag the town. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, just something yeah, fun. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So you're saying you're an angel? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm no angel. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> However, her, her monkeys fly, though. <laughs> Um, one of the things that uh, we are hopefully going to be working on here, it's going to be a couple months because I need, I need the daffodils to go down. I'm going to have a bunch of daffodil bulbs uh, this year after I go back and, and dig them up. And after I do that, I'm hoping that I will be able to plant some of, the, some of them around here. Mm -hmm. So next spring, mm -hmm. we'll have just a nice, nice. explosion of daffodils. Yeah. That's good. I got them. I got them falling out my ears. So oh, I can't keep I, anything alive. So don't come to me. Okay. Well, so yeah. well, hopefully we can do some plantings. Um, yes, ma'am. Well, so them? I reached out to them, and I owed them an email, kind of describing what we've got and, and what we wanted to do. And my thought with them is to have them come out here and look around and help us design and and figure out what plants need to go where. And then if they can provide any of those plants, have a work day where they come out and plant those. And it'll, once again, we just bring the community out here to help us um, do something and help it look better. What about the Sharpsburg Garden Club that used to exist? Are they still around? Um, last I heard, they were over at Cheering Methodist, but I haven't heard, I haven't heard in the last maybe year or two. They were over here, but when COVID hit, and we closed down the community center. I think they ended up going over to, I think over to Cheering or, or Get something. Get back. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I think that's everything. Does anybody have any? Yes, sir. Yeah, I will the right timer. Well, but uh, about five, over five years ago, I was asking about the ditch in front of my yard mm -hmm. and how it holds water. Right. Mm -hmm. On the other side, it looks so nice with the, <laughs> the rock and the drain that goes under the road. Mm -hmm. My side, I don't know who signed off on that, but it's just terrible. And since you're coming up sunset, I think you said DOT, mm -hmm. you know, that corner there where Angie, uh, I can't think of her last name, lives, my, the neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a the road holds water, so yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was one of the drains that we actually had fixed. We had by Celine. Yes, the one yeah. beside Celine. We yeah. had mm -hmm. that one fixed, so it should. The by hers. Mm -hmm. under, under her driveway. Mm -hmm. Under her driveway. I had to kind of used to cut the grass for but uh, anyway, I just a long time ago I had brought it up about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Drain. No, no, no. Yeah, if you're, if it's holding water, let. I oh, mean, it's terrible. And the thing is caving in, man, it, it, and as the, and it goes up. You know, now it's street parallel, and it's just, you know, crazy.
create a sinkhole. So is it so it's you, is it your culvert up underneath Williams yes. that is clogging? Oh no, underneath 54. Underneath 54. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then there, there's that corner there, William Circle, where uh, Tony. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That thing is so it's just sunk, big yeah. concrete sunk. I don't, it needs to be fixed. I don't know if that's part of your agenda. No. Uh, yeah. It. And I wanted to talk about getting my property rezoned, and I just wasn't sure where to start with that. Whether you're talking to you guys or privately or uh, you no, know, either one. No, so so the way that you do a rezoning is, is you fill out the rezoning application. You just bring it to council and say, I want to take it from probably R1 to traditional highway commercial. You're right. That's probably what you're thinking about, and then yeah, just a way to start. I don't. I have, I have no knowledge. We 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 have a form that that you can look at, okay. and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So anyway, mm -hmm. that thing's holding water bad, badly. Okay. And so. Angie's corner where it comes under her, the uh, her driveway, mm -hmm. sunset. Mm -hmm. That that whole corner right there is. Here. So is there a cross drain in between your house and Angie's house that goes up under 54? Uh, yeah, it goes up under 54 into the you know the neighbor across the road. Mm -hmm. Right. But it doesn't. So water could come from her yard and my yard mm -hmm. from the corner mm -hmm. and and should go under. And then it'll go under 54, and then it'll go back to the well, I don't south. Know which way it goes? It uh, should go south. I know it does. I'm just not sure which way. Okay. Um, so in other words, we just need to have DOT come out there and look at that area. Yeah, it's getting okay. worse. Been, okay. Creating a sinkhole is what's doing. So now, where is the sinkhole? All right. So if you stand in my yard and you're facing that drain as it goes under 54 across to the neighbors, mm -hmm. right there. To the right, mostly to the right, and then come back a little bit. But it's just deeper than it looks. You wouldn't want to step in it. Okay. Um, <laughs> at all. Can't, okay. can't, can't really take a lot more um, too closely to it without falling in. If, if you could guesstimate, how far away is a sinkhole from the edge of the roadway? Um, the length of the pipe. I mean, uh, it starts where the pipe basically ends. Oh, it's okay. 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 So something about that thing is. I don't, no, it's just it's probably right. water. It just keeps it. falling in, getting a little softer, and falls in. It's working its way towards Wade Circle. Mm -hmm. so, but it's only, I don't know, okay. six, six or eight feet. I'll, I'll come out there and look around, and we'll also call DOT to, to come out there and take a look at yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Of course, the, the, the problem with that area is we've got all that concrete right there, and all the buildings that Tony Brown is in, they don't have any gutters. So all that water just, just comes, come washing. It's got velocity as it comes down. Yeah. And it hits William Circle and... I didn't even know about that. Mm -hmm. I have to look at that. Oh, yeah. It's... Oh, no. It's, it's definitely... I mean, you can tell it runs that way. It comes yeah, it's definitely an impervious surface. A parking lot comes into my yard. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I try to go out there and shovel it away so that mm -hmm. that corner is a little bit dangerous if you're turning right. You know, up William Circle. Mm -hmm. uh, it just holds water way yeah. out of the corner. Yeah. So I, from time to time, I show it back into the yeah. ground. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, Floyd, can you remind me to to, to nudge DOT on that one? And what's your, Robert, one, what's four, your six. or Bobby? What's your thing? Your address again? One four six, William Circle, and then the the corner lot, the raw land. I can't remember the street number, but it's those two lots. But that's the corn, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You may not be able to find where you circle the sign test. I was saying earlier. Yeah. I need a sign. Yeah. I'm going to get DLT to replace it. Oh, and by the way, those signs are about, what, 50 bucks a piece? So, all right. Um, so that concludes uh, my list. Um, do I have any questions from council or from the public for any of the items that we've talked about this evening? Nope. All right. That being said, and all business before council being concluded, if I can get a motion for adjournment. Make a motion. Second. Tom has the second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. We are adjourned.